Well, hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to the end. Inde- we got. We're really ex- Okay, I think they're done. I think he, I think they're done. Listen, we, we got a lot to talk. Everybody, happy Monday! What? Okay, that was the last one. That sure was the so. last one. I really hope so. Uh, clearly, you know. Well, happy Monday. Um, we're excited to be here today. Uh, clearly, this is a construction zone. Uh, we're getting ready for season two, which launches September eighteenth, and so we're very excited about it. Um, but uh, there's no episode today or next Monday, the eleventh. We're just going to be having some of our favorite moments, some highlight reels, some great conversations we've had, some of our favorite skits cold opens, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so before we dive into that, though, Chris, how are you? I'm doing good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's a, uh, it's chill. It's chill in here. It's a little bit of a disaster, but... Uh, it is, yeah. But we're getting ready. We're getting ready for September 18th. Uh, season two starts September 18th, and we're very excited. We're going to have some new segments. We're going to kind of reconfigure the room, as you can see, maybe add some new color. Um, we talked about... Color, hey? Well, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see what happens. There might be. Batman will be very disappointed. Ba- well, that's true. <laughs> Batman will be disappointed. Um, but uh, no, we're very excited about it. And uh, there's going to be new new segments, new skits, different things. And we're looking forward to uh, a fresh season starting September 18th. But, um, you know, season one was amazing. And there were so many great moments. Uh, I feel like every conversation we had so far, I've, I've taken away something. Uh, I've learned something new. Um, it's a, it's an honor that I get to sit with people who are significantly smarter than me and talk about things that, uh, I really want to know about and that we need to be, um, aware of, uh, to live out, uh, just the Bible in today's culture. And so we hope you were blessed. Maybe this is your first time watching and that's awesome. We're going to go through a bunch of conversations together, but I thought before we even dive into some of the conversations and some of the great wisdom that we've gotten out of season one, we did some pretty fun cold opens. Now, now this is something Im- important to know. We have something that's launched uh, in August called In Doubt Insiders. Now, what is In Doubt Insiders? To become an In Doubt Insider, you join us. Uh, you help um, financially with monthly partnership. Where it could be five dollars, ten, twenty, fifty dollars, whatever you want. And uh, you get some perks. You get a you know a scripture calendar. You get twenty percent off the store, which is awesome because we have a bunch of swag. 20% off this, 20% off the mugs, we got hoodies, we got a whole bunch of stuff. But you also get some fun content. And just looking back at some of these cold opens, there were a lot of bloopers. Um, I'm not an actor. I am not good at this, okay? And many of you are like, yeah, amen, amen, <laughs> we know. But uh, as an in doubt insider, we want to give you exclusive content, behind the scenes, bloopers, different things. And so we encourage you, join, join the movement. Be a part of what we're doing. We want to bring truth and life in love to today's culture. And so, uh, but I thought we could start with just a couple of fun cold opens, some of my favorite ones. So let's take a look at those and then we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the End Out Show. Andrew here. Happy Monday. We have a great show for us today. We're talking about biblical modesty. Do you think you're doing it too much, maybe? What, this? Yeah. Am I a distraction? If I'm walking on the beach like this, would I distract you? Well, what would you look at? My face or would you look at my body? I don't know how We're going to talk that. yeah, that's actually I don't want you to answer that in <laughs> fact cuz I'd be a little bit uncomfortable if you said you noticed my body. Um listen, we should get the experts in here. Yep. We should talk about this. It's important. And I really need to go change because I am literally I feel drips coming down my head and my body. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Just want to remind you guys. I have my copy here. Donnie, do you have your copy? I got my copy. Right here. I got my. Chris, do you got? No, I. I oh, just no. Take oh. this. 
We got more, folks. That works surprisingly all well. Day, <laughs> all day, all day. Here we go. We all got hey, our copies. Get your good news. Absolutely. Get right your here. good news. We, we got all... good news. Get your good news. It's free. <laughs> GN23 in dot, dot CA. Get your good news. What? What? He's not wrong. Everything yeah. he's saying is right. Yeah, yeah. We do is. have good news. We got our copies. The question is, do you? Uh, let's pick another question. We're going to get Daniel to uh, pick a question here. And uh, this might not make sense, Daniel. Come on, baby. I'll get it. All right. Oh, he got... I, technology has really improved it's getting, in the I'm last you, decade, I'm I tell you. Yeah, AI is unbelievable. It's teleportation. <laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome to the Adult Show. We got a great, terrific show for you today, folks. But before we get into that, I have to tell you something. This book right here is free in April. It's called, what does it say? Before you shave your face. No, that's not right. What does it say? Before you share your... What does this say before before you share? I'm sorry, folks. I need my glasses. Before you share your faith, it's a terrific book about something. I don't know what it's about, frankly. This is not about shaving. Before you share your faith, it's a great book about evangelism. You got to read it. You got to get it. This resource is free for the month of April. What's the promo code? Indoubt.ca. What, what is it? S-Y-F. S-Y-F 23. You get this book for free, folks. Let's go to the show. Enjoy today's episode. God bless. What do you guys think? Was that good? What? What's going on? The lights are going, on. The lights are going out again. Brendan? Brendan? Chris? Wait, where is it? Donnie? I'm, I'm a worship leader, and I'll always be a worship leader in my heart. I've been doing it for a long time, um, but I always I'm a part of some of these worship leader forums on like Facebook and stuff, and I always <laughs> see every Mother's Day, hey guys, it's Mother's Day. Uh, what specific songs should we do this Sunday? <laughs> uh, I don't know, songs about Jesus, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we should probably sing about Jesus. Yeah, um, uh, you know, yeah. one time. At our church, uh, my old church, uh, I said, "Hey, it's Mother's Day, you know, so we have a special song for you." And I literally started singing "Good Good Mother," <laughs> <laughs> and it lasted joke, like really? two seconds. And okay. then, I, and then I'm like, "I'm just kidding." Like, obviously, we're gonna sing to Jesus, but Happy Mother's Day to all the people in the room. <laughs> but I just wonder what some yeah. of these people are are hoping for. All right, so obviously there's a, a little bit of ridiculousness for some of those cold <laughs> opens and just kind of funny moments. Uh, just to let the record sh- like be, let the record no. Let the record show. Let the record show. Thank you, Christopher. Um, let the record show. I did not sing Good Good Mother. That was 100% a joke. Um, well, I started. It's true, <laughs> just... but I just didn't do the whole song, obviously, because that would be heresy. Anyways, um, is it heresy? Yeah, it's heresy. So if you only do it a little bit, it's not bad, but if you do... It's just hair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is getting pretty terrible. I want to redo this. <laughs> but we won't. Um, so anyways, uh, the next one we're going to show you, this is a great conversation that we had. This is the... We're taking you way, way back. This is our first episode, February 16th, when we launched this new yep. kind of format with Dr. John Newfeld. And uh, we talked about the Great Reset. What in the world is going on in the church was the title of... Uh, the episode we just talked about secret sensitivity, the secret sensitive movement, how John kind of even had an inside uh, peek at that movement, um, and so what we can learn from that, how the dangers of it, and so let's just take a look at this clip. It was very insightful hearing from Dr. John Newfeld. So the 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 secret sensitive movement as we know it today really comes out of a very large church in Chicago, but predating that was the was the church growth movement. And the church growth movement was premised on this thought. In order to build a growing church, uh, what was required was not fidelity or faithfulness to scripture. (laughs) What was required is to do the work of a social scientist, come to understand uh, through scientific means what the culture looked like and what slice of the culture you were trying to reach, find out what their needs are, 
and then build a movement that is designed tailor-made to one group of people. And all the while, you'd know that the next group of people over there are not going to listen to you, but you're not worried about that. Wow. I mean, it's the same way as if you're, you know, if you're marketing you know, a certain kind of a running shoe uh, and you're targeting, let's say, oh, I don't know, 16 to 25-year-olds. Well, you don't care about guys like my age. I mean, you don't care what I think about it. Mm. Um, you're, you, you've got a target audience. So the entire church growth movement was premised on the idea is if you can find your target audience and you can design your message so that that target audience listens... Um, you can reach that group of people, and that's how your church can grow. So it's premised on that. I would say that the seeker-sensitive movement really built on, or basically the leaders of the seeker-sensitive movement, you know, they stood on the shoulders mm. of the people who were in the church growth movement. So it, it followed, and wow. it's a natural outcome of, of the uh, original movement. Wow. I, I mean, obviously, there's so many clear <laughs> indications that that's Terrible. <laughs> well, I think it's terrible because, you know, you no longer go to church to say, what has God objectively said? Yeah. And what is that timeless message, which has always been true? I mean, you know, is there a message that comes from the very foundations of the world? Mm -hmm. Or are we reinventing religion for every generation? And, and that's the problem, is that if you're in the seeker-sensitive movement, you say, this is exciting, this is cool, this is meeting my need, and it's everything I was looking for. However, 20 years from now, it's going to be passe, and nobody's looking for that anymore. It's kind of like the design of a car that ages not mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and then the next generation looks at that and say, I can't believe that anyone actually held that, yeah. but that's what's happening. We have to now reinvent the evangelical church every decade or so, and uh, it has no historic connection or root system either in Scripture or in the historic Christian church. I mean, it's crazy to think that that's a reality for a lot of churches, that they're going this direction. Yeah, they don't even recognize that's what they're doing, um, but the... the the horrible uh, biblical illiteracy. Now, I had a prof when I was working on my doctorate who, who said, those things that we win them with, yeah. we win them to. Yes. So if you win them with an easy belief that God exists to help you fulfill yep. your life's goal to feel good about yourself, yep. I mean, if that's what you're one with, don't you turn around now and suddenly talk about you know sin, the need for redemption, yep. apart from a savior, there's no salvation. I mean, that falls on deaf ears. That's not what I signed up for, and, and that's what's happened. We've actually created a religion that's based upon a contemporary need, but not a historic uh, revelation of God. All right, that was really insightful. That conversation, I feel like every time I talk to him, I leave significantly smarter. It's true. And um, and this is true. I feel like after I talk with him, I just get more excited to be in the Word. He just he's he has just, that effect on honestly. People. He just it's oh, yeah. just it's amazing. And so that was a great conversation. I think um, you know even though that was February, we're in September. It's a it's a conversation that still needs to be happening. We probably might even talk about it again in season two, just to be aware of false teaching, be aware of secret sensitive movement, all that's happening. Churches are still doing that often, and I think oh, it's yeah. important for us to get back to the Bible and just be in the Word and uh, not worry about you know pleasing culture, basically. But, uh, and that's basically, we did that as our first episode because that is just the foundation of In Doubt as a ministry. We just want to be a ministry that is preaching truth unashamedly and uh, explicitly gospel as these uh, new swag that Chris does not have yet. Uh, I don't know why he's not wearing it, but, you know, Someone one day he's going to... No. You want my hoodie? Oh, e extra, extra large? I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, that's funny. Um, let's go to another conversation. Sure. Uh, remember we talked with Chris Thronus. Uh, oh, a long yeah. time. That's an yeah, old yeah. episode too. Yeah. And this is when, you know, online church was still huge. And we want to just be aware that, you know, even when we came out with that episode, we understand that some people were unable to go to church. Yeah. Uh, they were with physical limitations or if they had, um, you know, uh, illnesses that, you know, they needed to be at home during the pandemic. That makes total sense. Yeah. But for the people specifically who... They rather just be in their PJs at home. They're totally capable of going to church, but they just chose not to. Yeah. Um, there were some dangers with that. This is a clip from Chris Thronis talking about is online church actually church, specifically for those who are able to attend. What does the Bible say about community? Here's a few things. I think first, it is necessary. Mm -hmm. 
it is absolutely necessary. I pointed this out as we preach through our new strategic plan, um, that in Matthew chapter 4, as Jesus calls the first disciples to himself, he calls them unto himself, but not by themselves, mm -hmm. right? Like, he actually calls them in groups of two. Matthew chapter 9, he calls Matthew unto himself, the tax collector. Matthew chapter 10, it's like the final roster of these disciples. Um, and and they are together. He sends them out together, which I think you actually see Jesus's vision for community is that, man, it is necessary that we do this together. Uh, and, and I think the 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 impulse especially after covid and the myth that people have bought into is oh i can just sit at home in my pajamas eating my waffles and watch church online and i actually said like if you believe that that is a myth i said that online and to our uh, <laughs> onto our uh, because it's true it's actually not a biblical idea that you can do this so uh, there's a, a great story from D.L. Moody and, uh, and Moody, one of his parishioners came up to him and Moody said, um, uh, yeah, sure. I'll come to your house. And so this guy welcomed him to his house. And the story goes that, uh, uh, he was talking with his parishioner and this parishioner starts to have this big long list of why he doesn't really like the church and how he can actually just do this kind of as a solo mission with Jesus. Right. And so they're talking in front of the fire. And as this guy is talking, D.L. Moody pulls a coal from the fire. And as the guy's talking, the coal goes from red hot to completely out. Hmm. So this guy finishes talking and Moody doesn't say a word. He just looks at the coal and looks up at the guy. And the guy says to him, sir, you have made your point. <laughs> right. Amazing. Which is great. Like, and I think that's the image, right? Like the the coal has to exist in the fire if you take it out it's it it will it's only a matter of time actually until that red hot coal goes out and i think it's true for the people who just love i love waffles in my pajamas on the couch it's like it's necessary you actually have to do this together man that was such a good conversation um what an analogy yeah like, i, like I that. just i love that that was really cool i just love i love the fact that um and i've seen it in my own life with people in my sphere just stepping aside and yep. just watching it go from very, very hot, cool, cool, cool to cold. Yeah. And um, something about being in the community, being in that together, um, it's so important. And so uh, we encourage you even now, maybe some of you have still been attending yeah. church or just stopped going altogether. Um, again, not talking about people who are unable to, but people who are fully capable. We encourage you to get plugged into community. Mm -hmm. And for those who are unable to, uh, be community and bring church to them and, and visit and love and encourage those who are in your communities. Um, should we do a fun skit? Uh, we, sure. we, did, we did some fun skits. Yeah, we did. Uh, the fact that I got Chris to do some of these skits, I don't know just how... Just shows just how impressionable I am, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And you think that was crazy, like the toothpick shaker and the wigs? <sighs> you wait till season two, folks. Chris Chris I'm is going to... just lucky I avoided the nun costume. <laughs> That's, Should we play that one? I don't know. Is we, that we is debated? That we debated having Chris as the nun incarnation from Nacho Libre, which is my favorite movie, by the way. Uh, let's do that one. We we did an episode on modesty, and this was uh, the skit we did before that episode. I saw a guy here last night. There were actually two. So I said to myself, why not Ray comfort them with the gospel? Well, where are they? I don't see them. They should be coming by. Where is your robe, Ignacio? It was a stinky. But these are my recreation clothes. They look immodest. Thank you. I mean, yes. It may have the appearance of immodesty, but beneath the clothes, we find a man. And beneath the man, we find modesty. Modesty? Yes. Ignacio, what is modesty? To tell you the truth, sister, I don't know. I think I know someone who can help. The world? No, the In Doubt Show. I'm not listening to you. You're crazy. 
Maybe, sister, you could join me tonight in my quarters and we could watch the show and have some toast. Sure. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Good job. That toast was terrible. Oh man! So this is this is uh, we you know Caitlin in our office here. She toasted it like level ten. Yes, and she, she brought did. it to me, and I'm like, um, we need to double toast that bad boy. And it was the driest, grossest toast I've ever eaten. It's like my favorite soundbite now. Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. That was actually like, unbelievable. Authentic, uh, authentic soundbite. But uh, yeah, that was that just shows my acting skills because I said good yeah. toast. Yeah, but it was terrible. You were lying. I You're was acting, lying. I was I acting. No, acting. I was acting. Um. Anyways, that was a fun skit. You know, again, in doubt insiders, there's some fun bloopers. There is. You know, there's some fun things that you'll uh be able to get. And since I'm not an actor, you know, we spend there most is, of our time. Maybe we should also make mention that there is quite a debate over whether or not there was a debate to show the clench or not. There was a debate. So, but we didn't feel like the clench was immodest. <laughs> We got together as a team and we're like, you know what? This needs to be yeah. on the internet. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's not our, we just, uh, that we wrestled with that one. Yeah. That one and another is, moment where yeah. we, should we show that moment? I should, the other it, debate. Is that up? Yeah. It's up. We, I might mean, as well show it. Uh, let's just, uh, this is another moment that we really wrestled with. Does this need to be on the air? Take a look. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <sighs> Okay, so I'm just going to take it easy for the next few days, and uh, you should be good to go. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sven. No problem. Oh, happy Monday, folks. Oh, let me just get up here. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Who is that guy? Oh, he's Sven. I, we, uh, Sven. He's on staff. Wait, oh. in doubt has a... Yeah. Staff masseuse. Yeah, we we do. Yeah. Can I? Oh. Can I get him? No, on? he's mine. <laughs> All right. So we really wrestled with that one. That one was a. Uh, that was we went we went back and forth. We had two options. Went, went crack and forth. We went crack and forth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. No, am, I, am I allowed to say that? You I don't know. Get behind me. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I want we, to be behind you. <laughs> <me>. <clears throat> Let me just drink some of this tea. <clears throat> These mugs, by the way, really keep things hot for a long time. Do they really? Yeah, indelt.ca slash store. You can grab these. And actually, the tea that I used today, uh, just a little fun fact, we ran out of Earl Grey. I've never tried this. It's called Lady Grey. Okay. Have you tried Lady Grey? I don't think so. Marcus, have you tried Lady Grey? No, I'm getting no's. I've never tried Lady Grey. And I thought, you know, we're trying to reconstruct here, turn it into a she shed. <laughs> I figured I might as well have some feminine tea. No? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just getting head shakes. I, the whole staff is behind the camera right now. Just no, no, stop, <laughs> stop. All right. So we debated with that crack scene. We went crack and forth and uh, it was really hard to, you know, and, and the idea came from my wife. Now, my wife, if she or if you're watching, she's supposed to be the level headed, you know, don't do anything ridiculous. Don't be dumb. No. Don't lose your job. <laughs> Similar things that Chris tells me, tells me every week. And Chris is supposed to be level headed. And sometimes some of his I ideas are getting a little. Yeah wonky Wearing but me uh, yeah but uh her suggestion was because like, nothing was actually showing yeah let actually, the record show there was yeah. no actual crack no but uh we had mateo at the time add skin color <laughs> and then blur out the skin color but uh so let let the record show yeah not a real crack uh, anyways let's get to a good conversation again because yeah. uh if ben's watching this right now <laughs> Michelle might be the host for season two. <laughs> Actually, no, because that was her idea. Anyways, right. um, another one I want to talk through is uh, we had um, Brent Smith, who's my pastor, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we talked about too legit to quit. We talked about the inerrancy of scripture and how it is legit, it is trustworthy, it is you know something that we need to stand on and be confident yeah. in the truth of it. And so he kind of walked through some of the reasons why we can say, hey, this is trustworthy. So let's watch that clip right now. 
how do we what do we say to the doubter yeah i i get it i get a kick out of it when you know people love to say well the the bible's full of contradictions mm-hmm. and you say well can you show me one uh well I, it's what i've heard you know <laughs> I heard uh, don't it, put I me on the spot i just heard it somewhere <laughs> you know and and people love to use these kinds yes. of arguments to just kind of you know put the bible aside um, and yeah, like you say, I mean, the Bible does have different forms of, of writing and poetry and, and allegory. And, and Jesus spoke in parables that was giving a, a story, right? Yeah. And so, but, but the idea is that these all have a uh, very important um, meaning behind it. And so, yeah, we take the Bible literally, mm-hmm. but we know too that there's certain writings and, and allegories that we obviously don't say that this is, you know, when God says, I'm going to, uh, you know, bury you up on, on wings of an eagle. It's not like we're going to all see ourselves flying through the sky on a, that would be cool. Right. It's like, Hey, I can't wait for that to happen. But uh, we know, it. yeah, that'd I'm be afraid of heights fun. though, but are you at I'll, the same I'll time? I'll be there for you, man. <laughs> I'll hold you. I'll hold you. Oh. Um, but yeah, we don't look at that and we read that going, man, I can't wait till that happens for me where I'm going to be flying on the wings yeah. of an eagle. We know that that he's using a picture to mm-hmm. really explain the, the heart of the Father, that he's going to uphold us and sustain us, right? That's mm-hmm. the idea. So we see that there's literal meaning behind it, even though we don't imagine that's what it's going to be. And so the Bible is to be taken literally, uh, you know, where you see it um, being spoken in that way. And and much of it certainly is, but we we don't explain away mm-hmm. the Bible based on on allegory and things. And so for people that are kind of doubting, like you asked, you know, doubting if the Bible is is real, uh, is it uh, literal? You know, we can see many things that have, have proven the Bible time and time yeah. again, right? Uh, we see it in archeological evidence where, you know, there are many people that will, you know, for example, Pilate, where they start to look through historical writings and go, we don't have no record of a Pilate and, and the Bible talks about this guy, Pilate, over, you know, ruling over Judea. Uh, this can't be true. Bible's false. There it is. Just disprove the Bible. And suddenly, you know, they discover the Pilate stone, right? That, yeah. That's got an inscription uh, of, of Pilate in there. And so, right, it's like kind of backtracking all these critics of the Bible going, oh, okay, well, that just disproved that. There's, so archaeological evidence gives a lot of great uh, backing for the Bible. Fulfilled prophecy, yes. another big one, right, where... The Bible, you know, uh, has written so many things of what was to come hundreds, hundreds of years before. I mean, uh, just coming through Christmas, right? And we mm-hmm. talk a lot about Bethlehem, and here's Micah five two prophesying that mm-hmm. this uh, ruler is going to come from Bethlehem, which was at the time a very insignificant town. Nobody's going to think that God's going to bring a ruler out of. Bethlehem, and then sure enough, here's Jesus born in Bethlehem. Yeah. And that was prophesied, you know, 700 years before Christ came. So yeah, we see many examples of fulfilled prophecy, just the, the, you know, the continuity of scripture written by uh, over 40 authors and over, you know, a 1500 year span. Mm-hmm. And, and yet we see the, the continuity of the message that there's no contradiction that's all pointing towards Jesus. I mean, you put, you know, 30 people together in a room that witness the same accident, you're going to get all different kinds of, yeah. of reports and, yeah. and and views towards that. And yet here we got the Bible with over 40 authors writing yeah. that same common purpose. So we see how the Bible has just shown itself and proven itself. You know, we, um, we see manuscript evidence yeah. of it, right? Love that guy. Love that guy. It's pretty cool. Uh, like starting September 18th, we're going to be changing the flow of the show, and uh, we're going to be having Third Chair joining us. And I'm happy yeah. to announce that Brent Smith has agreed to be a part of Third nice. Chair. Nice. Oh, that. So cool. he'll be joining us every month, every couple months, and just uh, being a part of the conversation. But I love hearing from that guy. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Brent Smith. But uh, I just love th- that episode, and I encourage you if you're doubting and if you're wondering, is the Bible something that I can trust? Is it all? You know, um, like, is it is everything literal or is something, you know, what's the word uh, I'm trying to think right now, but my brain is a little foggy? Is mm, everything... Like a allegory or... Like fictional? Non-fiction. Not fictional, but just like um, it's a metaphor. Oh, yeah. Or allegory or, yeah. you know, yeah. there's like... And there, there are different types of... Pardon? Non-literal. Non-literal. 
Thank you, Marcus slash Barack Obama. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we talked through, yes, there are different types of biblical writings. Yeah. But uh, that's a fantastic episode. Just understand the archaeological evidence uh, that they're discovering more and more over time. Uh, the consistency of, you know, mm-hmm. the same message over how many writers. And so <clears throat> great episode. If you're doubting uh, the inerrancy of scripture, that was, uh, that was a really good one for us. Um, other skits that we did. I'm trying to remember some of the fun skits. Back, back to the skits, eh? What do you think? Should we do another conversation? It's up to you. You're the host. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh. I wasn't oh, sure if you do the shoot. Oh, do you, you do, do the shoot, shoot at the end? <laughs> yeah, I usually do the shoot at the end. Okay. Rock, yeah. paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> what the? <laughs> oh, uh, what do you want? You want a skitter conversation? Oh, I didn't think that one for uh, We'll do a conversation. Let's conversation. do another conversation. Let's do another conversation. Um, fantastic conversation. Uh, and I think we've talked about it a lot. We've talked about the fact that uh, pornography, the, mm. the stats keep yeah. climbing, 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 of course, yep. with the smartphone and all this technology. And so we had Sean Bonito all the way in Halifax um, from Secret Habit. And um, he was talking about some of the um, science behind it. I remember remember how he was talking about it's like, you know, the reason why running to your Bible, running to prayer doesn't necessarily work when you're in the midst of yeah. the temptation is because it's that fight flight or freeze yeah that's um, really interesting so let's take a look at this clip it was incredibly insightful and we hope uh, it blesses you so a couple of things that i wanted to share about that i think are very easily missed by i would i'm just going to say the church just simply because pastors aren't educated on addictions they're not educated on psychology they're really good at one area and they're part of the body but unfortunately i think pastors have been put into a position where they have to be a lot of parts of the body and has just naturally done a disservice to the to the flock. So one of the things why I say that is because when we look at how faith and science go together, I really believe they're super congruent. We can see that God made our brains and minds a certain way. And when we actually look at how healing happens through that element, we can realize that, man, this is a, even a, be- a greater way for us to know Jesus better. So one of the first things I love helping guys understand is what is called our nervous system. Very practically speaking, is our fight, flight, freeze response. Almost everyone has heard of that before. What this really comes down to is understanding that the reason why go pray more, go read your Bible more, the reason why that doesn't work very well, and it's good. There's nothing, like you said, they're, they're good things. We need yeah, to do those. 100%. But when, but when we go into a fight, flight, freeze response, which is a fear response, which happens when we perceive danger or experience real danger, you can imagine how many things we perceive as dangerous. We're almost always in fight, flight, freeze without knowing it. When that happens, the part of our brain that registers logic and detail and makes good decisions literally shuts off. So when you tell somebody to do something that's more logical and detailed and like good, making a good decision in that moment of temptation, they're actually not able to. Hmm. So what we, what we need to do in moments like that is we need to deep breathe. We need hmm. to go for a quick walk. We need to put on a song that relaxes our nervous system. We need to find somebody to tell about what we're feeling or experiencing. Then when we do that, it brings us into a place of feeling safe and feeling grounded and then our brain is reactivated. Then we can pray. Then we can read scripture. Then we can journal. And that's powerful to understand. That's not to discredit prayer and journaling and reading the Bible. It's just to say the brain works this way. We have a creator who made it this way. Let's just look at how it's made, how it runs, and, and use it in that way. Uh, that was so good, man. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of great I didn't, I didn't um, like, and I, I talk about it in the episode where. I had the same thing with like anxiety where you fight, flight, freeze, and you start yeah. to kind of downward spiral. Yeah. And I started quoting scripture over and over again, trying and to help it, yeah, me, remember? Right. And, and it wasn't helping yep. me. I just, and I'm like, but it's the Bible. Why isn't it working? It's because I already, the logic in that part of my it brain, just, it just disconnects. Yeah. I like that idea of having a game plan. Ahead of time. Ahead of before time. time. Yeah. To know. Yeah, ahead of that time. was kind of cool. Yeah. I thought that was really insightful. Yeah. And so just uh, be prepared so when temptation comes. Yeah. You're ready. Do the slow breathing he talks about and like the yes. go for a walk yep. and put on calming music. Um, I just thought that was very helpful. Mm-hmm. And so that was a great conversation. Lots of good facts that will just help you. There's biblical support to everything he's saying. But there's also a kind of a psychological and, yeah. you know, um, the science behind how our brains are wired. 
And so, uh, great episode, great episode. Uh, how, how is he doing? You're friends with him, right? You I said am. that he moved to the Czech Republic. He moved to the Czech Republic, and it seems like he's doing well. I've been kind of nice. keeping up with him online, and um, that's a big move. Yeah, no kidding. Huge move. Uh, but uh, they're on mission there. They're loving it. He started with a new um, uh, ministry. Oh, yeah, he mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, and so. Cool. On this episode, you can go to resources, the resources page for, like, episode sources, and... Um, when we see everyone's, you know, all the things we're talking about, we'll have links to their ministries and stuff because I think uh, these people are resourcing and helping a lot of young adults. And so we want to make sure that you're resourced well. Um, another, another, uh, another, let's do another conversation. Sure. Go for it. Okay. So we, we, um, we did an awesome episode on Mother's Day. This one is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> particularly special. Uh, because we had my mother, that's right, Margot Marcus, in the house, and um, she's a legend. I know she's watching right now because she's my number one fan. But we talked about a mother's mission. We talked about a mother's mission with her kids, but we also talked about just the missionary story in her life. Yeah, we talked about the power of prayer. Uh, that was a fantastic uh, conversation. Just hearing testimony after testimony of God's faithfulness. I want to share this one story about my aunt. Uh, Aunt Laura. Oh, yeah. And just uh, her journey, uh, she was just about to die, and my mom's dad was just praying and fasting. So hear this testimony of God's goodness. I hear all the stories, um, even the story of the power of prayer for him, if we can share the testimony testimony of your sister mm-hmm. with, with, with Laura. Yeah. And so she had, I think it's meningitis Correct. is what That's, she had yeah. mm-hmm. when she was probably eight years old or something that I can't no, remember. No, very young, very oh, young. very little. Very baby, like probably one year old or something. Yeah, so they were like, okay, she's going to she's gonna pass away. Yeah, the, the, um, she is number five. Yeah. I'm number seven in the family. And uh, uh, by the way, the eight of us are named after missionaries, hmm. back to the missionaries. Yeah. I am named Margaret after a British missionary. Hmm. So... Laura was named uh, after another missionary. So uh, Laura got sick when she was a baby. And uh, uh, another thing that dad did, and it's mentioned in the ar- article as well, is that they planted churches. Mm-hmm. So uh, dad was always in and out of villages planting churches. And yeah. uh, mom being the awesome mom that she was, never complained about moving from place to place or mm. or him being away. At that time, there was no phones and no yeah. fast trains and all that stuff. So, um, so when she got sick and dad is not in town, uh, she he always make sure that to leave money mm-hmm. uh, in case she dies and they need money for the funeral. Wow. That's how much they were expecting it to happen any time. Mm. And so every time dad leaves the house and go in mission, uh, he leaves mom with, with, with enough money in case that happens. And then she didn't get well. She never walked. She never talked mm. in the proper age. And she was just a vegetable, like, you know, like not, not growing at all. Mm-hmm. Right. So dad and, and, you know, got really tired of that. And, and, and they said like, okay, dad said, I'm, I'm going to go up to the upper lo- room almost. And I'm going to pray and fast for three days and told mom, I cannot see anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody for three days. Mm-hmm. So he went up and fasted and prayed. And his prayer was, Lord, it's either you heal her or you take her, mm. you know? So he prayed that and he saw a vision mm-hmm. that, that the Lord cut her, cut her tummy. Yeah, like he watched the surgery. Yeah, and yeah. he took all the um, bad stuff out mm-hmm. and sold her again. And he went downstairs, and after that, Laura got better. Hmm. Laura is walking, mm-hmm. talking. She never made it to school, mm-hmm. but Laura's life is incredible. She is a blessing wherever she goes. She's yeah. an angel. Yeah. Like she spent whole life with mom. Mm-hmm. And I believe mom lived long enough. Mom passed at 98. Yeah. For the because, sake of Laura. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the power of prayer. Yeah. The faith. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that every time we pray that the Lord will answer. Yeah. But, but there is power in prayer. Yeah. Amazing testimony. Mm-hmm. Amazing. 
Uh, and she's with us today. And she's oh, such cool. a blessing. Yeah. Such a, you know, the kids love her. They just like run to her. All the cousins and little kids, they just they just love yeah. Auntie Laura. And so she's such a blessing to us till this day. And what a testimony of God's faithfulness. And again, mom, you know, she said in that interview, you know, we pray and we pray passionately, we believe, but it's not like every prayer gets answered the way we want. We trust mm-hmm. in his sovereignty. But in that moment, God touched her and uh, she's been a gift ever since. Um, let's watch a fun skit, like I promised. Uh, we have uh, we had a lot of fun with this one. Um, we had uh, Ray Comfort on the show, <laughs> and we talked about evangelism and the importance of you know being on mission, sharing the gospel. And so we thought we'd do a skit of what not to do for evangelizing. Yes. And so take a look at this. All right, man. Are you ready to street evangelize? I think I'm ready. Bingo. Found my target. Leave the keys. You're still doing this thing? Leave the keys. You got this, Andrew. Remember, the way of the master. No, you don't! What if you stumble on your words? Trust God. He will give you the words. You look like a fool! Luke 12, 12 says the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say at the moment when you need them. Look to God, son. This guy's gonna make fun of you and judge you hard! You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Wait, aren't you taking that passage out of context? As a matter of fact, yeah. Who needs context? Am I right? You're actually terribly wrong. Andrew, you should probably say something before it's too late. You suck! Don't listen to him. You're tripping so much I feel like I'm at SeaWorld! You got this. Get this man a towel! You can do it. Come on. Are you okay? You've been staring at me a long time. Do you, do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And, and then you accept that the blood of Christ has covered all your sins and that you're forgiven and you can go to heaven? Well, I, I already have. I'm a Christian. Oh, great, Scott. Oh. Let's talk. I think I have a okay. few things to share with you. Okay. You ever heard of Ray Comfort? Uh, no, I haven't. No? Actually. Oh, yeah, you might want to look him up. What does he do? Does he do like the street uh, ministry too? Yeah, a little more effective. Did, did you feel like I came across a little too strong? A little sweaty. Oh, yeah, it's, a little, it's hot out here. That was ridiculous, Chris. <laughs> I like how you played two roles. I know. It, well, <laughs> props to Marcus, hundred yeah, video guy. 100%. Like, yep. You guys, uh... Everyone we showed it to were like, what? <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> so funny. So, but yeah, and I mean, the funny thing with that is I think we went through several iterations of yes what skit we should do for Ray Comfort. Yes, because that was technically plan B or was, C. C. Yeah. Yeah. Plan yeah. A was, I mean, and we thought it was funny. Yeah. But I we still just, think it's kind of funny. I think but. it's funny. So we wanted to do like a, an old like 90s infomercial. Yeah. Where, you know, someone's wrestling in bed and it's like tired of having sleepless cold nights or whatever. Yeah. And then it would be like, well, get the Ray Comforter. Yeah. And it was going to be a big blanket with Ray's Ray's face. face (laughs) Yeah. And then it just shows the person peacefully sleeping. Yeah. And, um, and then weren't we going to do like the glasses? Wait, order now. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, order now. And you get Ray Bands. And it was like the glasses that his dog wears. (laughs) Yeah. But with like Ray's face. I don't know. Some kind of. And we thought, you know what? We don't want to bash anyone. We don't want to make fun of anyone. Yeah, we didn't want it to come off no. the wrong way. Never. Even though it's coming from a place of totally. love. Totally. totally. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I love Ray Comfort. Uh, but uh, we never want to come across as that. And so we yeah. just always try to err on the side of just making fun of myself. 
Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, speaking of making fun of myself, let's do another skit right off the bat. All right. I think this skit is hilarious. Uh, we So we'll do a previously, you'll see kind of the context, but we did an episode with Dr. Fuzz on oh, yeah. transhumanism. We talked about AI, all those kind of things. And um, Brendan, live on the show, just went on ChatGBT and asked ChatGBT to write a song about his bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. A.K.A. me. Watch this. Previously on the In Doubt Show. So I asked it to write a song about my bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. <laughs> bald Egyptian friend starting podcast. Oh, oh verse one. <laughs> He's got a bald head and a heart full of gold. <laughs> An Egyptian guy with stories untold. <laughs> He's got a passion for podcasting a dream in his mind to share this wisdom with the world one episode at a time oh my goodness <laughs> Dude, this is good it's awesome this is so good that's a that good is so All good right. that's a hit okay <laughs> save that one do you want the chorus yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah don't bore us get to the, the chorus you have to you have to write the song in an yeah. episode come up with the melody for this one two one, two, three. He's got a bald head and a heart full of gold. An Egyptian guy with stories untold. He's got a passion for podcasts, a dream on his mind. To share his wisdom with us all. One show at a time My bald Egyptian friend Starting a podcast Sharing his thoughts And his heart At last With a mic in his hand And a smile on his face He's ready Stir the snare up in my headphones. Let's go. It'll take us on a journey through his life and his land. With this podcast, let me tell you folks, he'll make us understand the beauty of his culture and the struggles he's faced, the love that he's found, and the grace he's embraced. My bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. That's what he's doing, folks. What amazing. Sharing his thoughts and his heart at last. At long last. My bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. We're starting a podcast, folks. Sharing his thoughts and his heart at last. At long last. We waited a long time for this. With the mic in his hand and a smile. Big smile, terrific smile. He's ready to bring the world to a better place. Actually, that's my job, but I'll let him know this. It's quite fine. He's ready to bring the world to a better place. With my help, of course. With my help. I'm a big part of this. He's ready to bring the world to a better place. Yes, I am. I'm ready to bring the world to a better place. A much better place. A fantastic place. It's the truth. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a hit. <laughs> like that's a good song. That song gets stuck in my head. It does. And I like, like it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. The melody's very catchy. So now I'm trying to figure out like I know the words were written by ChatGBT and then I, you know, changed some of them so it fit with yeah. the melody that that I wrote. And so did I co-write with ChatGPT? Like does he I mean technically. I does guess. ChatGPT get writers rights? I don't know. He didn't come up with the melody. That's I don't true. know why I keep saying he. I don't it's, know what it is. Yep. Anyways, um, yeah, that was really fun. That was a so again, in doubt insiders, bloopers. <laughs> Every time Chris put his arm, the, just okay. a light, light, gentle touch on my shoulder uh, for that down chorus. We probably have about 30 takes. I, we took a lot of me yeah. just well, if Ben's watching, no, we didn't waste that much time. It was only two uh, takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just one oh, take. Was fast. You know, uh, it was easy. Yeah. Um, but uh, in doubt, insiders, you can see some of those uh, bloopers eventually. Uh, that was very hard to do. Some of these things are very hard to do. It's I'm hard so to get happy. 
I didn't have to look at you. Because when I watched it the first time, you're just like straight face with that little toothpick shaker. I was, I was trying to go for like a really weird look, but I don't think it quite came off. <laughs> Yeah, just like you just, just like my normal straight, face. Yeah, yeah, oh gosh yeah right um okay let's go back to conversations um uh all right so this next episode i think um you know was an eye opener for sure it was called there's no such thing as christian no such thing as christian yoga yeah and it was dr chris berg and uh, we had him on twice for our spiritual things this is one of them and next week we can show you the other one with the, with the enneagram but this one he's talking about the biggest um, organization mission organization is yeah. not what you think remember so let's take a look at this clip it was very eye-opening to me take a look uh, the largest missionary organization in the world uh, is not actually a christian mission organization hmm. it's actually india's vishva hindu parashat it's hinduism hmm. and they came out with this quote quote our mission in the west has been crowned with fantastic success hinduism is becoming the dominant world religion and the end of Christianity has come near. Wow. And how do they do missions? Yoga. That's one that's that's yoga is Do they say the that? Missionary. Do they say yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Yoga is the missionary arm of Hinduism. Wow. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh boy. So when when we engage in yoga, we're actively helping their missionary efforts, even Christian yoga, because they they're remember. Hinduism is fine with syncretism. So if we get syncretistic with our Christianity and yoga there, they love that. Hmm. They'd promote Christian yoga everywhere because it's got the Hinduistic philosophy attached to it. And they said they believe the end of Christianity is here because they won. What? I know. I know. That was a mind. And even the fact that he says that they admit that they get excited when, you know, the Western world, like this is the, yeah. the arm that they're using. Yoga is like kind of the arm they're using to reach the western world that's just yeah i don't know if we've linked that particular letter or not but i know i found it you did find online. it yeah we gotta so we gotta find that again and, and link it yeah because that's just um, that just blew my mind um fascinating conversations we've had you know yeah so season really one was awesome mm -hmm. uh another one we went through that was really really good uh we had my wife on the show uh, and right. actually we had her on twice she came on third chair once mm -hmm. uh and she did um talking about Ray Comfort. She went to the, you know, the seminar at our yeah. church where they talk through evangelism and the way of the master. And so she came on the show and just unpacked a little bit about that. And that actually got our, that went viral. I did. So she like does her. not like social media. She's not a fan. She doesn't have it. Doesn't like the camera. Likes to be behind the scenes. And ironically, the one time she comes on, she goes viral. And that video got like 400,000 views or something That's on Instagram. Nuts. And she's like a celebrity in her home. Yep. Um, but uh, she came on as a guest as well, and we were talking about modesty. And, you know, it was the summertime. It was very hot. Um, and so she gave an amazing picture that she read somewhere of what it looks like and how we can, the questions we can ask ourselves before we get dressed in the morning. So take a look at this clip. So there was uh, a woman who um, loved the Lord, and she took the Bible very literally. And so... When the Bible said to go into your closet and shut the door and pray to God in secret, she would literally go into her closet. She'd like make room on the floor every day and she'd shut the door and she'd pray inside her closet. And um, My she, mom does that, by the way. She, yeah. turned, she converted her closet into a prayer closet. Your mom's cool. the best. Shout out. <laughs> I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest fan. All right. <laughs> um. So... Yeah, she took she took the word uh, at face value for what it said, and she would go into. She was a very sweet woman. She had a very sweet spirit about her. She loved the Lord, and she would go into this closet and she would ask God every morning. She said, "Of these clothes that I have here today, what would you have me put on that would bring you the most glory?" Hmm. And I think that's. That's what my big takeaway is from studying modesty is what can I put on that will bring you glory, God? Mm. The attention shouldn't be on me. Mm -hmm. I don't need to look flashy. I don't need to look extravagant. I don't need to look expensive. I need to look, I need to look like I'm glorifying God. Mm -hmm. So good. And I'm not just saying that because she's my wife. <laughs> that was really, really good. And I mean, imagine if all the young people who are watching this today, you asked yourself that question. When you got dressed in the morning, uh, I think it would it would be incredible. Yeah, 
I think if we genuinely seeked the Lord and asked that question, I think that would uh, be um, it would change the community. And yeah. so great conversation. That was really awesome. I mean, now we're getting into September. It's getting colder, so we don't have to worry as much. Uh, that's true. But uh, yeah. we thought in the summer, cover it up. good, cover it up. <laughs> yeah. Cover it up. We had a lot of interesting comments. Yeah, uh, that one. That one actually probably got that ruffled way more, more feathers, feathers than, than the, the Enneagram spiritual. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. I think uh, interesting. You know, can we talk about that? Like, are we? Should we? I'm not going to mention any names, but I mean, like, someone just would not stop. Well, I think. Yeah, I think people again. It's sort of going back to that initial, uh, not really illustration, but the the scenario that brought all this up, where with your friend, the painter, yes, talking to his. These guys are the yeah, Christian the, friends, yeah, and People they had who, very, yes, legalistic yeah. ideas. Like, of wow, what, they wear pants. Yeah, how dare you go to that church? So I, I think we may have caught the attention of some similar-minded, yes, yes. people, yes. person, yes. yes, yeah. And he, I think it's yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he was uh, not a fan of. Um, Shorts. Yeah. He just, he couldn't handle shorts. He said, and and we had to ask him, like, are you saying that if anyone wears shorts, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? And he said, yes. If anyone wears shorts, they will not go to heaven. Imagine all those poor people in Bermuda. Terrible. Yeah. That's just, that was, so I didn't, I did not expect an episode like that to I knew that's a hard conversation. Yeah. I didn't expect that to, you know, get that much yeah. um pushback compared to some of the other conversations we had. Um another great episode uh we talked about uh we had again in the spiritual things series we had Jen uh Pollock Michelle mm-hmm. and she talked about manifesting. And I loved how, you know, manifesting had similar um characteristics as the prosperity gospel kind of the name it yeah you, you repeat it claim it yeah so let's take a look at this clip i thought it was very insightful both manifesting and name it claim it theology the the kind of power is all invested in the person who's like either manifesting or praying so when you manifest your reality you you know it's going to happen because of your efforts right you prayed with regularity at these regular times of day for this specific period of time, and then you're going to get it back in relationship to how your own kind of efforts and regularity and kind of faithfulness. And I think similarly, name and claim it really puts the onus on the prayer. Mm. Like, mm. how much faith do you have? If your faith is strong enough, then you will receive whatever it is that you've asked. And this is just not the truth of prayer as we see it in the Bible. We actually have examples in the Bible of people who pray with great faith and don't get what they want. And it's because, you know, they're coming up to the limits of like their own wisdom and knowledge of what God's doing in the world. So I can pray for something and I should. I should bring every request to God. But what I can't be sure of is that my request is exactly in line with God's will. It was a fantastic conversation. Mm-hmm. I see often on my Facebook um, people manifesting certain things. I hope you man- we're manifesting for you, bro, or you know, keep manifesting, keep manifesting. It's like it's getting pretty popular. Oh yeah. Um, and so that was a great conversation with Jen Pollock Michelle. If you have any questions about that, or you're wondering about manifesting, uh, head on over to YouTube, watch that episode. It's called "You Can't Manifest Your Life." And uh, very insightful. Yeah. Actually, um, it was funny. I went down a rabbit trail with that. I forget how I did that. But I, I wound up finding some of, like, the main thought leaders in oh, interesting. manifesting whatever, like the Oprah Winfrey uh, yes. crowd sort of thing. Yes. The the one lady literally in the bi- her biography, because I was like, okay, what what makes you qualified to manifest, yeah, or to, to like to like tell people yeah. how to do this stuff, and she was just literally like, "My life experience has taught me how to do this." Fantastic, and that's it. Like, there's there's no actual there's no foundation on any foundation. of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, oh, my <gasps> wife's calling me. Should we pick up on the show? 
I'm just going to turn it off. <laughs> um, we have a skit we want to play for you. Uh, we got to uh, interview Amanda Jenkins earlier in season one. Um, she is the co-creator of The Chosen. And, um, you know, I asked her at the end of the interview, hey, I'm Egyptian. I do a Middle Eastern accent. I got an A in drama 10. Uh, what are the chances of me being in season four? And she kind of made it sound like it was... It sounded like I had, had a, a chance. chance. Yeah. So you're saying I have a chance. Uh, so we thought we'd put together an audition tape, yeah. uh, me playing the role of Jonah. So take a look. Hi, my name is Andrew Marcus, and I'm auditioning for season four as the role of Jonah. Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I, I, I can't do that. You must. But in Nineveh, they're, they're, they have such cancel culture. I don't want them to cancel me. Do not speak to me of cancel culture. You must. But I don't want to offend them. You, I just let them do what they want to do. You, you, you must. <laughs> Oh, I will not do it. You, no, you must. Jonah, Jonah. Oh, there's a boat. You can't stop me now. I will not go to Nineveh. Where am I? Oh, why does it smell like fish? Wow, Andrew, that was so amazing. I think I got it. I think you got it. I think you got it. So what do you think? Comment below. Do you think yeah. I got a chance? I, th I think I, that was pretty good. If they do... If they do Jonah? A First Testament version of... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you never know. They go back and forth sometimes. Do they? With like Old Testament stories and then oh. they go back and forth whatever. So maybe, maybe yeah. if they need Jonah. I'm sure I would be absolutely on the roster. Yeah, and I think that was the first skit we did with you too. That was the very first yeah. skit. I think. I think it was the yeah. first skit. Yeah. So we didn't quite. We didn't know, know what, what we were doing. We were getting <laughs> yeah. into. Yeah, I think you probably realized by then. Oh no. Yeah. This is going to be a little different. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyways, uh, that's that, and I'll mm -hmm. let you know if I actually end up getting. We, I think, from now till there, because I think they're doing seven seasons. Of the chosen, yeah. We're not promoting the chosen. No, uh, we know that they even openly admitted that ninety percent of it is not biblical, which is it's a pretty high percentage. <laughs> so too rich um, for my blood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're in no way promoting it. But uh, well, we thought we could do some fun skits of me just continuing to submit audition <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tapes all the way to the end, and then we can say, you know, I've just haven't been chosen. Yep. And that's that. But I'll try. Uh, last uh, conversation. Um, we talked with Brett McCracken. He's the editor of um, the Gospel Coalition. And um, it was a great conversation. We talked about his book, The Pyramid, uh, The Wisdom Pyramid. Yes, that's what I was And uh, we'll show you a skit from that in next week's episode um, called Christian Pyramid Scheme, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. But um, And yeah. sometimes the skits are not funny. Sometimes. And yeah. we're okay with that. That's true. You know, you can't win them all. It just happens. Anyway, so he talked about his book, The Wisdom Pyramid. And you know how the top has the Bible, has church, and then kind of as you go down. No, yeah. no. Opposite. Opposite. What am I talking about? Why <laughs> oh, yeah, would you do no, very no. little? No, that's, Have yeah, that's a little bad. tiny piece of God. Yeah. No. Sorry. Flip it. The bottom, you're rooted on scripture, yes. community, church, whatever. And then at the very top, he has an iPhone or like a smartphone. Yeah. And um, he just talks about what it's been doing to today's culture, uh, just being so immersed in technology and information. So take a look at this clip before I butcher something. Clearly, we need to watch it. <laughs> we need to watch it again. Here we go. It's no surprise to me that like mental illness and anxiety and depression are skyrocketing across the world. This is a global trend. You know, mental unhealth mm -hmm. is, is a major problem. And it just so happens to coincide with the smartphone being released, you know, about 15 years ago. That's when like all of these like 
on like anxiety started spiking and depression and is it because we're getting and all these things is it because we're getting too much information like the brain just yeah. can't take it so in the book the first half of the book you already mentioned is called sources of our sickness and i that's kind of the depressing part of the book where i lay out kind of the sobering reality of what digital technology and the information age that we live in is doing to our souls and to our ability to discern truth um and one so the three sources of our sickness that i talk about are too much information kind of information gluttony just like eating too much food makes you sick being bombarded with too much information you know our brains literally don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. our, our, there's science that's actually showing, interestingly, that in the digital age, when our brains are encountering an unprecedented amount of information, humans throughout human history have never had to process as much stimulation as they are now. Perfect. So I should yep. probably take my Bible down from the top part yep. and bring the, the phone. Yep. Question is, what if I use my phone as my Bible app? Inception. You know what, though? There's nothing like the Word of God on paper. It is. And that brings nice. us to something interesting as we close. Oh, does it? Remember we talked about, and we don't have this, I don't have this, you know, it's not, Marcus is not going to pull this up for us right now. But we had a conversation about how AI might rewrite the Bible. I think we talked about it with John Morrison. Did we not talk about it? We did, right? Uh, I think it was briefly mentioned. Maybe. Like they're thinking of this idea of making like a one, you know, a correct religion oh, yeah. and just correct it yeah, and have a new Bible. And so someone actually told me the other day, it's like, hey, don't get rid of your physical copies. In fact, just mm. accumulate physical copies because if that does happen, you know, the paper versions will be the only ones yeah. that are legit. So a word of wisdom. That's it from today. So we hope you enjoyed that. You know, season one was amazing. Next week, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have some cold starts, some skits, some great conversations that we've had. It'll still be a construction site. Maybe it'll look a little different. Uh, but uh, we're just kind of getting ready for season two on the 18th. So we'll do the same thing next week. And uh, we hope you have a great Monday. See you later, folks.